good evening everyone so today is world cancer day so this year the theme of this day is close the care gap so the main purpose of celebrating this world cancer day is to increase the awareness about cancer and so that we can prevent many deaths as many as deaths so uh, for next 20 to 25 minutes we are going to discuss a very important issue regarding cancer and why the this close the care gap is important so why there is a uh, care gap one of the main reason of this care gap is the distance distance between physician and patient distance between patient to patient so first of all it is important to state that we need to think beyond this stigma of cancer so c for c that means cancer is now curable cancer is now controllable so we are going to discuss a very uh, few important areas and there are lots of discussion today more focus to the common people to increase the awareness of the common people we are uh, going to discuss uh, various uh, areas so i i request all the respected viewers if you have any doubt regarding this particular presentation you please make comments and you can ask question in the comment box and we we will surely address those questions so sorry there is an issue let me share it again sorry for this technical glitch i think it is now visible yeah so close the tear gap and we are going to discuss on this area that is cancer is a preventable disease is it so we will discuss that i am dr shamastar i am from the background of clinical pharmacology and i am also a a uh, therapeutic specialty consultant in the area of diabetes and allergy asthma cancer is not my specialty field but i will try to discuss a uh, broad concepts about this very important topic and yes we all have the right to health and if we if we just consider the cancer care the half the world's population lacks access to the full range of essential health services and many are denied the basic cancer care and why due to differences in income education levels geographical location and discrimination based on ethnicity race gender sexual orientation age disability and lifestyle and that is why we need to think beyond this uh this barriers and this is a very deadly figure the estimated epidemiologic trend of the fifth leading cause of death from years 2016 to 2016 it will become the 
most common cause or leading cause of death from fifth to first the cancer is going to uh, conquer this thing but what is important to note now it is 2020 almost 10 million worldwide death is due to cancer and if we just have a look on the data in india again it is a very deadly situation and most worrying reports are coming from our northeast counterparts northeast states specifically the mizoram area the isol district you can see almost four or five persons per uh, one uh, person is affected with cancer per four or five uh, Mizoram or Ijol uh, habitants. So this is a really threatening condition. And we need to have more data on different parts of our country, but this is a very important study. And yes, we talked about death, we know that death is something that we cannot prevent it. And that is why in Gita, uh, Lord Krishna taught us that Basansi Jirnani Jatha Bihaya, Nabani Ghrinnani Naroparani, Tatha Sharirani Bihaya Jirna, Jirnana Nayani Sangyati Nabani Dehi. So, it is important to consider that sometimes we will become older, elder, and then this, when we become the uh, members of this geriatric population, then ultimately we will die. That is the most, uh, uh, what we can say, this is the inevitable truth. But what is important that this loss of health with aging in this red line, if you can see, then you will find this. This red line means the this is in y-axis. That is the stock of health. So when a, a baby born, full of life. So there is no more comorbidities. Morbidity is very less. So very less morbidity means full stock of health. So that is considered as one. Now, as we become older, so what happened? This red line, you can see the gradually declining. So gradually declining of this red line and then ultimately we will die. But what is important to consider if we follow this red line, then ultimately when we become a member of the elderly population or geriatric population, then we have a very less stock of health. But what is real life means? That is, we will live up to the end with a full stock of health. So in the blue line, you can see that is an ideal situation until end, we will have a full stock of health and at the at the time of death that is we will suddenly that drop and we will die so that is the desirable condition so representation of normative aging with loss of full stock of health with which individuals are born that means indicating gain of morbidity contrasted with that squared curve that has greater longevity and fuller stock of health. So fuller stock of health means less morbidity until shortly before death. So when we will die till that time, if we have very less morbidity, that is the squared curve representation. And that is ideal situation for more, most of our patients. So we can see this uh, red curve and we can see the blue curve. So we all want to be a member 
of that blue line so that until our end we have a very good quality of life a very high stock of health we know this that our death is something which is obvious jatas hi dhruvo mrittu dhruvam janma mrutasvacha tasmat parihar jathe na tvam shuchitum arhasi and that is why we need to do our duties and that is why god told karvanne va adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phal hetur bhu ma te sangasta karman so then what should be our karma our karma should be to have less morbidity until we die so we should have very less morbidity until shortly before death and that is why we need to make this red curve to blue curve and how we can make that there is very important five mantras if we can follow this five mantras then we will make this curve which is a uh, 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 from red curve to that squared curve so these are the healthy behaviors these are the mantras that is number 1 don't smoke number 2 be physically active number 3 eat a healthy diet number 4 maintain a healthy weight and number 5 get enough sleep now coming to our question that cancer is a preventable disease is it so so maximum case the major lifestyle changes can prevent cancer and why it is that because 5 to 10% of all cancer cases are due to this genetic defects and in at the later we will we will also discuss why these genetic defects may be due to this our lifestyle changes may be related with this type of lifestyle changes that we are also going to discuss today and apart from that that 90 to 95% have their roots in the environment and lifestyle and this is why if we take care our environment and lifestyle we can prevent cancer so in this diagram we can see the 90 to 95% causes are due to the environment and yes there are a small chunk of 5 to 10% where the cause is genetic and regarding the environment diet is the most responsible uh, enemy then the tobacco in, tobacco intake may be active or passive smoking or other use of tobacco then infective etiology then another epidemic is going up and up and in this time of covid pandemic we just forget that that is obesity alcohol and there are some other factors so yes there there is definite cause which is a genetic cause and that is why some unfortunate patients who had visited us tell us that i am not a smoker i am i am a very good athlete i am doing everything good in my life my lifestyle is very good i i went to bed at right time i always uh waking up in the early morning doing some exercise so why i get this type of cancer so answer remains in the gene so gene is definitely an important cause for our cancer but today at the later uh uh slides we will discuss how this gene also can be influenced by this lifestyle related issues so we in in this diagram i think we can visualize what are the genes responsible for different types of cancer now coming to smoking and alcohol they are notorious enemy and they are consisting a different or heterogeneous groups of cancer 
so smoking and alcohol they should be restricted we should stop smoking and also it is not it is important to note that alcohol is also a bad thing for our health now this a uh, diet issue and how diet is responsible for different types of cancer so that is also important to note you can see here the 70% of the colorectal cancer are due to our diet 75% of prostate cancer are due to diet so breast cancer 50% they are due to diet so what is important if someone's mother or grandmother has breast cancer now already she had high chance of developing cancer so if they are not become careful regarding the diet then this diet also going to contribute for developing cancer and ultimately they have a very high 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 chance of cancer development so this is why we need to give stress on diet and already we had talked about this obesity pandemic and how it is related with different types of uh cancer it is important to note that 100 uh female patient who have a uh, 20 female patient who had diet uh, 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 among the 100 uh, patient female patient who had diet with cancer among them 20 patients have obesity and 100 patients 100 male patients who had diet with cancer among them 14 of them have uh, obesity so obesity again a very important contributing factor for cancer and as we had talked about this infection and cancer there are different uh, types of cancer that is related with uh, different infections starting from hepatitis b hepatitis c they are related with hepatocellular carcinoma different types of anogenital uh, cancers are related with different serotypes of hpv virus gastric cancers we all know that this is helicobacter pylori infection is also something which is very common uh, and we need to address this issues so we if we uh, get patients with helicobacter pylori infection it is important to treat those patients with proper use of antibiotic and also there are different uh, other uh, viruses including hiv and epstein sir virus uh, different helminths are responsible for different types of lymphoma so what is important to note again that if you have infections some variety of infection that can be a risk factor for development of cancer and this is very unfortunate but a uh, uh, dangerous truth that environmental carcinogens we are exposed with different types of environmental uh, carcinogens and how we can prevent that that is a big question we we can see from this slide the motor vehicle exhaust that is one of the most important contributing factor to develop childhood leukemia so unfortunate indoor air pollutants with different types of using mosquito coil and some other things they are responsible for childhood leukemia lymphoma lung cancer metastasis happens due to that nitric oxide poly aromatic hydrocarbon again uh, a very common environmental pollutant that is present and that cause lung cancer different pesticides they are linked with different types of sarcoma to leukemia and lymphoma so what is important and 
to 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 note to to have some strategies to control this environmental carcinogens to have something alternative which which are pollutants we need need to counteract those so how we can prevent cancer these are some uh, issues by which we can prevent cancer we can we can address those risk factors one by one like number one we should avoid tobacco products we all know tobacco kills not only those who are taking tobacco directly but also passive smoking also is a dangerous thing so how we should address this how our government our regulators should act this this is a very important thing minimization of alcohol cons consumption again there are some states who took a very great steps to stop alcohol intake i think that type of regulation is required for tobacco products also vaccines for cervical cancers and hepatocellular carcinoma prevention we have hpv vaccine we have gardasil gardasil vaccine we have hepatitis b vaccine so this type of vaccination help us to prevent cancer cleaner environment already we had discussed so many environmental pollutants are there which can could be a detrimental for our health and could be carcinogenic we need to clean our environment and also the lifestyle we we should have a modification in our lifestyle behavior apart from that there are some high risk behaviors need to be addressed uh, safe sex practice that is important drugs again there are some controversy but yes some drugs used for some other reason that could be beneficial in terms of preventing cancer just an example we use metformin commonly to our patients with diabetes it has been seen that metformin has some role of, to prevent cancer also similar uh, uh, evidences are with statin drugs which lowers our lipid level ldl cholesterol level so they have some pleiotropic benefit by addressing uh, this issue of carcinogenesis and they are they in some studies it has been seen they are anti carcinogenesis uh, genetic diet is extremely important we are going to discuss which specific diet is going to help us and obviously there is no alternative of exercise so in this beautiful picture we are seeing beautiful beautiful uh food items but what i believe who are viewing this presentation i i am damn sure that uh, maybe 10% or 15% of the viewers actually take this type of food uh in the, regularly so what are the fruits generally seasonal fruits different types of spices vegetables and cereals these all are anti carcinogenic but we are forgetting nowadays or taking this type of things just like cereals we are taking but we are taking the refined one so refined ones are not good for our health so we need to be cautious regarding our diet and we should take this uh fruits vegetables uh spices and whole grain cereals they are anti carcinogenic now i want to 
give emphasize on some few specific ones like who has uh, th this type of uh, products have anti carcinogenic effect number one the carotenoids lycopene is a very common carotenoids generally present in fruits like watermelon or in apricots pink guava grapefruit rose hip or in tomatoes so they have anti cancer effect they have roa scavenging property up regulating the detoxification system so they reduce the oxidative stress the in they have a interference with cell proliferation induction of that gap junctional communication inhibition of cell cycle progression and modulation of signal transduction pathways another important molecule is resveratrol rich con this is rich uh, really present in grapes peanuts and different berries they have anti cancer effect specifically some model had shown it acts against this group of cancers like lymphoid and myeloid cancers multiple myeloma breast cancer prostate stomach colon and pancreatic ca they arrest that uh, defective cell cycle they induction they induce that apoptosis via fas or cd95 ligand p53 ceramide activation tubulin polymerization mitochondrial and adrenal cyclase pathway up regulation of p21 p53 or bax and down regulation of surviving cyclin d1 cyclin e bcl2 bcl xl and other cellular inhibitor of apoptosis proteins they activate caspases suppress nitric oxide synthase and suppress the transcription factors like nuclear factor kappa b so we can see the simple fruits they can prevent cancer quercetin again this is a major dietary flavonoids broad range of fruits vegetables and beverage like tea uh, is rich source of this quercetin this has a antioxidant property anti inflammatory property anti proliferative and anti uh, anti proliferative and apoptotic effects they also block that nf kappa beta activation so consumption of quercetin in onions and apples it has been found that they are again rich source onions and apples are rich source of quercetin so if you uh, in hawaii there was, there was a study that suggest that consumption of onions and apple is inversely associated with lung cancer risk another important molecule is silymarin which is an antioxidant and hepatoprotective agent it is uh, found in silybum marianum plant commonly known as milk thistle they suppress that nuclear factor kappa beta regulated gene products including cox2 lipoxygenase and inducible nitric oxide synthase tnf alpha interleukin 1 the activity against tumors like prostate and ovary in rodent model they had shown this to anti tumor activity indole 3 cannab carbinol again this is a very uh, richly found in cabbage broccoli brussels sprout cauliflower and daikon artichoke so they are also anti -cancer cancerogenic and also anti inflammatory properties are there sulforaphane this is present in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli they detoxify the carcinogens they arrest the cell cycle induce apoptosis inhibit that histone deacetylase pathway which is a very uh, important pathway for cancer genesis modulate the map k pathway inhibit nuclear factor kappa b and also inhibit the production of different type of reactive oxygen species so they have antioxidant property apart from that there are different therapeutic and preventive potentials uh, 
agents present in different types of commonly found foods and uh, uh, spices. Green tea, they are rich in catechins, turmeric, curcumin, garlic. From garlic, we will get that diallyl disulfide, black cumin, they are rich source of thymoquinone. Red chili, we found capsaicin. Ginger is a source of gingerol. Lycoris antethol. From fenugreek, we will found diosgenin. And from cinnamon or clove, we will found that eugenol. They all are anti-cancer agent like activity they produce and they can prevent cancer. So as we were mentioning the importance of whole grain foods. So I think this whole grain foods are absent in most of us uh, uh, dietary intake. So wheat, rice and meat, they are whole grain foods. They have chemo preventive antioxidants like vitamin E, tocotrinol, phenolic acid, lignans, and phytic acid. So if we refine it, because what we are taking, that is not a whole grain food. We are taking the refined food, refined wheat, refined rice, the basmati rice, that's that very uh, favorite for all of us. But what happened by this refining process concentrates the carbohydrate and reduce the amount of other macronutrients, vitamins, and minerals due to that removal of the outer layer. And one example is like that. The vitamin E is reduced by as much as 92% by this refining process. So as you were taking the refining rice, refined rice, you were devoid of getting that vitamin E, which is a very good antioxidant, which can help us to prevent cancer. Next step is caloric restrictions. So this is a very important concept. If we have high calorie intake, then we are more prone to develop neoplasms. There are lots of animal data, animal studies suggest clear, clearly that even in the rodent model, rodent cancer model, if they are taking restricted calorie, less calorie, there is less chance of development of cancer. So caloric restriction is one of the very important steps to prevent cancer. And you can see the rise in the curve in the uh, incidence of cancer, it was not that much high previously. Why? Actually, we human, our system is generally made up for fasting. So maybe 20,000, 30,000 years back, we have to fight for taking food Maybe five days, seven days gap, we, we, we got some food. So our system was like that. So now when there is abundance of food, we become more susceptible to cancer development. And that is why this concept is coming. If we have caloric restrictions that can help us to prevent Cancer. And this is a very interesting paper, I must say, and I request all of you to go through this paper, the evolutionary medicine from dwarf model systems to healthy centenarians, restriction of number of calories consumed extends longevity in many organisms. In rodent model, caloric restriction decreases the levels of plasma glucose and insulin-like growth factor one, 
postpones or attenuates cancer immunosenescence and inflammations without any irreversible side effect in organisms ranging from yeast to mice mutations in that glucose or igf uh, like signaling pathways that extend the life uh, lifespan but also cause glycogen or fat accumulation and dwarfism that was a little side effect of, of this uh, particular concept but actually what happened you can see here by having that caloric restriction in yeast worms flies and mice model it has been seen there is the stress resistance proteins that synthesis becomes higher and that causes decrease in different other parts and in case of human as of now we don't have any data regarding this concept but what is important to take message from this yeast worm flies and mice model if we have a caloric restriction that will help to delay the aging delay development of diseases like cancer development uh, and also it will affect the growth little bit we becomes little, our height becomes maybe little bit less but again this need to be thoroughly investigated with different types of uh, uh, related, uh, related models but this is a very interesting concept next issue how we can prevent cancer is the exercise and physical activity so physical inactivity that increase the risk of cancer of breast colon prostate pancreas and of melanoma it has been seen in different studies and this way this mechanism you can see the exercise how it regulates the cancer metabolism the different pathways by which exercise inhibit the cell proliferation the cancer cell for proliferation and ultimately leads to cell apoptosis and this is why there are lots of uh, studies done with different drugs but drugs will only target any one specific messenger but we want to control all the messenger as a whole holistically and for that exercise is only the answer and so there is no alternative of exercise starting from inhibiting the cancer cell proliferation and inducing apoptosis it also regulate the cancer metabolism the immune environment so what happen the our immune cell they are ready to destroy those cancer cells by an exercise reducing the risk of cancers we can found clinically from different studies enhance the curative effects of cancer treatment already the patient has cancer if we prescribe if if we motivate those patients to have exercise that will help to have a curative effect so they have a synergistic effect with cancer chemotherapy and also the exercise will reduce the cancer related different types of chemotherapy induced uh, toxicities starting from cognitive decline to cardiac toxicity to osteopenia to fatigue or oxidative stress so everything so it has huge role so we should give an emphasis on this exercise and mindfulness in this picture apart from this lady doing surya namaskar what we are seeing the surya the light 
and this light is again very important because the circadian clock that we are not obeying nowadays that again is going to give us a huge threat of this cancer pandemic so we need to understand this circadian clock and cancer interplay so circadian clock establishes daily rhythms in multiple physiological process to maintain this homeostasis and if we disrupt this circadian rhythm and circadian core clock alterations happen and ultimately there will be promotion of cancer initiator genes and the related activities the circadian clock machinery and circadian rhythm control they have several cancer related hallmarks pharmacological modulation of this circadian clock that provides a novel anti cancer strategy there are few drugs that are going to uh, be developed and already we have uh, like melatonin the circadian rhythm disruption we have very less melatonin so if we have less melatonin at night so we will not get that particular sleep so melatonin replacement can help us so in this diagram we can see this normal cell i think in the slide you can see that that particular clock the normal clock and how the oncogenes the tumor suppressor inactivation leads to cancer cells and that the, you can see that disrupted clock so if we are disrupting the clock our own clock our own circadian clock then there are multiple patho pathogenesis will happen and ultimately that will leads to growth of cancer cells and this is what i want to give emphasize as we are mentioning that 5 to 10% is due to the gene genetic cause but you can see this obese phenotype what happen different types of if exposure of different environmental factors ultimately leads to change in our genetic structure our epigenetic alteration happen so there will be different process known as histone acetylation or tna methylation and ultimately what happen the next generation they will be affected by this type of epigenetic reprogramming and that will leads to disease phenotype if we have a good lifestyle if we have if we take vegetables fruits as we can see in the this uh, this side this man so taking good food good fruits good vegetables good spices and whole grains and good having a good exercise like activity so they lead to this lean phenotype and ultimately these epigenetic alterations will not be there they are responsible for delayed aging and low disease risk and their transgenerational effect is actually going to uh, to have a baby with a normal phenotype so we need to address this issue otherwise our next generation will suffer and the the growth curve of the cancer will go up and up and with that it is our duty to close the care gap yes cancer needs to be treated it is curable it is controllable but we need to detect it early and apart from that detection part we should have a proper strategy by which we can prevent cancer and that is why these are the take home messages don't use tobacco restrict alcohol number 2 eat a healthy diet eat plenty of fruits vegetables maintain a healthy weight have a calorie restriction 
limit the processed meat say no to processed meat be physically active get vaccinated because there are some vaccine which can prevent some specific cancers like hpv vaccine or hepatitis b vaccine avoid risky behaviors safe sex don't share needle like that and also get regular medical care visit to your own doctor to have a screening whether you were suffering from any particular cancer or not because early identification can save a patient's life so with that again i just want to thank you all for your patient's hearing and let's take a oath to close the care gap and wishing you all uh uh wishing you all happy uh swaraswati puja and let's learn from devi swaraswati the mantras to be to have a very uh, good life as we had already mentioned about that five mantras with that thank you all and good night